Welcome back everybody, I am your host Winback, and today I'll be taking you through my build for a two-handed ranged demolitionist and occultist. This is the Pyromancer class, and you'll find out very quickly that it's probably the most simple yet effective class you will ever play in your life. I'll tell you the skills, tell you the early gear, and then tell you a couple half-baked fire puns. That's number one if you're keeping track. Before we get into it though, uh, please bear with the YouTube pleasantries. Your likes, your comments, and your subscribes are always appreciated, and I promise I'll keep them nice and safe and toasty for you. So we've got some mega effective gear for your early levels and probably a lot fewer skills than you are anticipating. Unless you already looked at the bottom of the screen and now know exactly how many skills we are using, I wasn't lying when I said that this build was simple. If you ever wanted to have the Doom Guy experience in Grim Dawn, then look no further. Turn up your BFG division to its loudest and get ready to walk forward like an unstoppable mass of fury and metal. So, to light us up, let's start looking at our skills first. This is the super complex, insanely hard to remember part of the video, so really, really focus here, okay? I mean, absolutely 100% zeroed in on my voice and the screen right now. Ready? Okay. Step one, pick fire strike. Step two, pick explosive strike. Step three, max out fire strike. Step four, max out explosive strike. Did you write all that down? Obviously, I'm kidding, but there is really not much more to this build early on. The more you play it, the more you'll be tempted to branch out to new abilities, but I would highly recommend just sticking with the recipe here and allowing those four steps to cook. Once those are done, there's only a couple other things to do for ultimate blasting power. Now this, however, is the point where I'm going to lay it out for you nice and truthful. If you like having a build that relies on combos, hitting a lot of different buttons, you might want to try something else. There are tons of options in these kits to create a really button-heavy build, but that's just not what we're going to be about in this video. The version of the Pyromancer is only going to left-click until about level 12, and then Fire Strike is going to be doing most of the damage, while Explosive Strike will turn that damage into an AoE for clearing bigger mobs. Once you make it to level 14, you've got enough points to completely fill out Fire Strike, Explosive Strike, and the modifier Searing Might. That is counting the points required into your bar to unlock those skills, so at this point you can start branching out to your Flame Touched or Vindictive Flame options, or you can switch over to the Occultist side of things to turn up the heat on the Soleil's Witchfire. I don't personally love sitting on an empty second class for that long, so I went the Witchfire route. This is more preference than anything though because Witchfire diversifies my damage type to Fire and Chaos, whereas Flame Touched will simply continue to spew more fire. Vindictive Flame is what you'll want to take if enemies are getting too close to you and they're hitting you and you want them to explode into fiery red mist for touching you inappropriately. Now with all of those skills considered, you'll mostly want to just keep your mastery bars pushed as far as you can with every level beyond those. The real kicker here is that you probably won't have to worry about much until level 50 or so, at least in terms of skills. You literally have the left click of doom, so interrupting that flow seems a little sacrilegious. Now let's switch gears and talk about some early game items. One of the most effective sets in the game for this class specifically is going to be your Brimstone set. This set isn't super hard to find, and it's only a three-piece set with exactly the type of two-handed man cannon that we've only dreamed of up until this point. You have to be at level 20 to use the items, and you probably won't need to exchange it until at least level 40 to 45. I made it all the way to the swamps before I found a better weapon, so... The only downside to this set is that there is a helmet involved, so you can't get the full explorer set for maximum XP farming, but 3 out of 4 isn't the end of the world either. In fact, the 3 items give us so many points into fire strike and explosive strikes that uh, changing any of the 3 pieces requires some serious commitment. There are actually a couple points early on where I had at least 21 points into fire strike 
and those two items were responsible for 30% of those points. It is bonkers. With that in mind, however, you'll also want to keep an eye out for gear that does that as well. Any gear that adds more points into fire or explosive strike is worth taking a very hard long look at. Barring that though, the next real stat you want to be collecting is attack speed. At the time of making this video, my attacks are per second 2.92. If you can believe it, that has actually come down a bit from what it was prior to recording. I'm sure I don't need to lay it out much clearer, but not having attack speed on an auto attack focused build is like having a burrito without a tortilla. It's messy as fuck. For that reason, items like Fanatic's Overcoat and Vortex Stone are worth their weight in gold. Fanatic's Overcoat adds total speed and health stats, but has a 30% chance when you get hit to give you 10% more attack speed. Vortex Stone just gives you a flat 7% attack speed as well, so for an amulet that feels pretty solid. Now there are quite a few metals and rings out there that give you attack speed, so don't worry about not finding something right away. And then Turin's Grips are my last real strong item suggestion. These gloves are usable at level 30 and they'll give you attack speed, fire damage, and points into explosive strike. Really just the whole firework stand of value in one easy to find set of beautifully embroidered digit protectors. This was yet another item I found that I didn't have to swap out until about level 50. You'll also want to pick up the Relic Inferno, which is your earliest case relic that's going to give you fire damage, burn damage, and an activatable called Volcanic Fury, which is going to turn up the fire damage as well on your autos. This is not a permanent aura ability, so you will have to hit the button every so often. Typically, you only use it to burn down those really, really heavy enemies who seem to last more than one or two bullets. After Inferno, you will transition over to Conflagration, which gives you basically a, an Albrecht's Aether Ray in the form of uh, white hot lava. But I don't typically use that button a whole lot. It's more there just for the passive stats of the relic. So that's everything that you need for the relics. Just remember Inferno into Conflagration. Now before I go, I want to make one more little list of items that make this early burn extra bright. Components often get looked over in these first couple levels, but they really don't get enough credit for uh, as much as they do. There are three that make a big difference for me. And namely, that's going to be Consecrated Wrappings, Void Touched Ammo, and Vicious Jawbone. All three of these will give you either Attack Speed, Chaos Damage, or Cunning. If you manage to find a Kilrian Shattered Soul as well, you should definitely equip that too. Just remember not to sell or destroy the item you equip it to without having the inventor get it back for you. The reason that we're not using any Fire Damage components is because most, if not all, Fire damage should be coming from our skills and passives. So if you've been paying attention to the video, you'll see that we really don't need a whole lot of help in that area at this point. So these components will buff up the chaos damage as well, just in case we meet some particularly fire-resistant enemies. That's it for this video though, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and be sure to remind me if I missed anything that you wanted to hear about. We'll be back tomorrow with the later game build flow and the extra skills, devotions, and late game gear. But until next time, peace out, and I will see you there.